go to Epson, Yogi. Miss Devon, find my nephew and send him to me at once. Bueno, senor. want to see you in the study. You wish to see me, Uncle Nelson? Yes, come in. Sit down. I did have something on my mind, but first let me ask you, did you find what you were looking for? Why, Uncle Nelson, I didn't... I wouldn't dare go through your desk. Well, of course not. Do you care to finish your cigarette? It's too bad you bothered, because I have what you were looking for right here. Well, unfortunately, I'm not surprised. Morally speaking, forgery is not particularly more heinous than many of the scrapes I've gotten you out of. It is, however, considerably more stupid. But, Uncle Nelson, I swear I... You were drunk, no doubt, and in a jam, but not half as bad as the one you're in now. I'm not positive, but I believe the law provides a ten-year penalty for a case of this kind. You wouldn't prosecute you? Of course I would, and I shall, if you ever disgrace me again. Now, this is the last time I pay off for you, my boy. And unless you change your ways, I shall... Well, I think you know that I keep my word. But, Uncle Nelson, I... There's no more to be said about the matter. But... Did you hear me? see your endorsement on the back of it. But I'm not sure I can get over there. All right, I'll see what I can do. Hello, dear. Mother, can you let me have $200? I'm sorry, Rex, I haven't got it. But I've got to have it, simply got to. You can get it somehow. Rex, what's the matter? Nothing, honey. It, it's for a friend of mine. He's in a terrible jam. Why do you worry me so? You know how your uncle humiliates me. But, Mother, I've got to have it. It's terribly important. Certainly, I refuse. And regardless of your denials, I know that you want that money for Rex. And supposing I do? Why did you ask me to come and live here? To make a beggar of me? Why did you accustom Rex to wealth and educate him if you didn't expect him to require money? I was hoping to make a man of him, not a drunken playboy. And That's enough, Nelson. Even you couldn't expect me to stay and take that. But well, why do you stay, Laura? I stayed for the advantages I foolishly thought would come to Rex. But there's a limit to my endurance and his. We are leaving, Nelson, tomorrow. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Laura. I like having my family around me. A call it a patriarchal complex if you like. But I do believe that... Oh. oh, senor. The man from the village is here with the Palomino horse for you to look at. All right, I'll be right down. Bueno, senor. I think it would be wise for you to remain for the present.
Sorry, sir. I thought you were at the stable. La Muñeca Negra. What do you know about that? In our country, often, she means death. I know what it means in your country. What does it mean on my desk? I do not know, senor. You're lying. I'm not lying. Don't let anyone into the house, not even freight people. And lock the front gate, you understand? Where's Miss Marion? I do not know. Tell Rosita to the finance center here immediately. Bueno, senor. Bueno. Uh, get me New York City. Bryant 57192. I want to talk to Mr. Henry Stedman personally. This is number 312, Mr. Root calling. Yes, Stedman? Yes. Get a hold of Mallison and Walling. What? I want them to know where I am. Have them out here on the first train. Oh, they'll come all right. Just say... The Black Doll. Yes, thanks. Goodbye. Well, where do you think you're going? We thought we'd run down to the village. Oh, change your mind. You're not going. No one leaves this house. Pay no attention to him. He'll have us behind bars. Please, next. Mother. I think if Uncle Nelson wants us to stay. Uh, Rosita. Si, senor. Did you find Miss Marion? I no can find her in her room. Why don't you look where you know she is? Uh, maybe she's in the summer house. I go see. No. I'll find her. Mm. Boy. Well, how is it? There's a touch of magic in your cooking. And there's not an onion in it. A fine detective. Thieves steal the food right out of our mouths and you sit there. It looks like the perfect crime. Wait a minute. Are there any fingerprints? No. Aha, uh -huh. I see tracks. Come, Watson. Be careful, stranger. There's wolves in these here parts. Hey. Looks like he's gonna put up a fight. I'll cover him from the other side, Butch. Okay. So long, pal. If I don't see you again, pal, good luck, pal. How do you suppose that happened? I don't know. I was afraid it wouldn't. I think we'd better eat our hamburgers. Hello. Hello, Father. Uh, we were... That is... This is Mr. Halstead. How do you do, sir? We were uh, just having a hamburger. Would you like one? Who gave permission to trespass here? I... I said it was all right, Father. This is not an auto camp. Father, please. Marion, go inside. I'll see you tomorrow, Marion. If your equipment is still here in the morning, I'll have the sheriff remove it. <laughs> Come here, Stuart. Looks like we'll have to place a Galahad, Stuart and rescue the beautiful princess from the castle. came down the village one night and got all liquored up. I had to bring him home. <laughs> but you won't get in, though. I brought a lot of people up here, and I always had to take them back. You want me to wait for you? Yes. OK. We want to see Mr. Root, please. I think we're expected. Uh, Senor Mallinson and Senor Walling. That's right. Uh, come in, please.
Why did she send them away? In the garage, or she will be out of the storm, sir. Oh, gentlemen, Mr. Root is waiting for you in the library, if you please. Come in. Well, hello, Rude. How are you? Uh, sit down. Thanks. Nelson, it's, it's good seeing you again. Fifteen years, it, it doesn't seem possible. No. Uh, sit down. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll stand by the fire. So you finally come out of hiding, huh? No, call it retirement. What have I to hide for? You ought to know. Hmm. You're a little bit more outspoken than you used to be, Nelson. But bear in mind, if I had something to hide for, we were all partners. Uh, but Nelson, you know perfectly well that I, that, that we ha had nothing to do with Barrow's death. You think you could prove it? If you had any suspicions, you would have had them at the time. You would be in a bad light if you started talking now, wouldn't you? All right, Rude, forget it. Nobody's going to talk out of turn. No? Then why pull that cheap theatric trick on me? You know, I wouldn't put it past you, Madison, to be setting the stage for a shakedown. Well, I don't mind saying, if I'd found out where you were a little sooner, I might have. You had it coming to you. But I don't know a thing about this, Rude, and that's on the level. Why, surely uh, you don't think that I... Why, I haven't seen that thing since... Since the day we discovered the mine. There are only three of us in Barrows that knew anything about it. I suppose you think I sent that thing to myself. Or that Barrows came back to life. Maybe. Maybe he didn't die. Ah, don't be a fool, Wallings. Barrows has been dead for years. And if that's why you sent for us, I think you're missing a bet. All we've had is a nice wet trip for nothing. Well, since that leaves us with nothing to do but talk about the good old days, I think I'll be going back to the city. No, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I don't think there are any more trains. And besides, the roads become impassable in a storm like this. But we're not prepared to stay. We didn't bring anything. Oh, I think I shall be able to fit you out with anything you need. By the way, don't you happen to know where we were? Since we sold the mine, I made it my business to know where you were and what you were up to. Oh, there's Estevan. Uh, he will show you to your rooms and uh, provide you with anything you require. Uh, dinner is at 8, and uh, come down a little early if you want a drink. Are your room, gentlemen. If there is anything you wish, please ring for me. Thanks. Well, Wallings, I've got to give you credit. I didn't know you had the nerve. What? What do you mean? Trying to hijack the old man. Sending him that doll first to soften him up. Only I noticed he didn't soften. Oh, you must be crazy. I never knew where he was until he sent for us. Now, Wallings, you can trust me. No, no, I tell you, I never want to get mixed up with that man again. Why, I thought you said. No, I was telling the truth. How did it get here? Do you think Barrow... Oh, get Barrow's out of your head. He's been dead for years and you know it. But we're the only ones who knew about it. Who could... How do I know who? Besides, the doll isn't going to bite you, is it? Don't be so jittery. Have a drink. You're making me nervous now. Didn't you announce dinner? Uh, si, senor, I did. Well, where is everyone? Senor Marison has gone to bed, very tired. Senor Walling begged to be excused to. Well, the others, my sister, Miss Marion. Miss Leland, in bed with an ache. We'll have a train in room. Mr. Rex. What's the matter with Miss Marion? Miss Marion, she's not coming. She didn't say why. You tell Miss Marion I want to see her here in two minutes. Did you hear what I said? The senorita has asked me not to disturb her.
Ryan. Why didn't you? your own plate. Now don't tell me you want to go out again. Hey, what is this? Don't you want your umbrella or your rubbers? Why did she touch it? It is sign of a death. It was meant for Senor Rude. You better get Mr. Rude right away. Oh, Senor, you do not understand. Esteban. Why, Marion? Why, what's the matter? Oh, you poor child. What has happened? I don't know exactly what did happen, but I think you better get her some warm things. Uh, si, Senor. I go and get Rosita. Yes, Rosita will know what to do. Is everything all right here? She mumbled something about somebody being stabbed. Stabbed? Oh, fantastic. The poor child was probably terrified with the storm and became hysterical. She's very highly strung and emotional. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Anybody's liable to become upset after seeing someone murdered. I haven't the slightest idea of what you're talking about. Mother, Marion hasn't been murdered, too. Rex. I think you'd better leave her where she is and call a doctor. Dr. Giddings will be over right away. Thank you, Rex. She'll be all right with Rosita. Did the storm terrify you into running out without hat or coat, too? No, I went down to my neighbor's to telephone with the sheriff and Dr. Giddings. What's the matter with the phone here? Somebody cut the wire. I see. And to get to this neighbor's, did you take the path that goes by my trailer by any chance? No. No, I went through the main gate. Uh, Rex, dear, don't you think you ought to get out of those wet clothes? All right, mother. Senor. Oh. Oh, I didn't take off my coat, did I? There you are. Now, don't you think you might break down and tell me just who's been murdered? Well, it was my brother, Nelson Rule. There's simply no reason for my not telling you. Of course, I didn't recognize you at first. Is anyone with the body, Mrs. No. 
It isn't a very pleasant sight. Well, I understand how you feel, but if the murderer is still in the house, you're giving him a wonderful chance to destroy any evidence he may have left behind. Well, that didn't occur to me. I'll send to Esteban. Oh, would you uh, mind if, if I have a look? First, there isn't any reason that you shouldn't. I hope you won't mind, but I'm afraid I couldn't face it again. Esteban, will you take Mr. Halstead upstairs? If you please. Thank you. A jar of jelly, some talcum powder, and a plate. Buen, senor. Boys, all right. Uh, surround the house. Don't let anybody through. Uh, bundle up. Bundle up like. Uh, oh, how do you do, Miss Lena? This is the coroner. Come on, man. Come on. Come on with me. Don't be scared. So there's been a murder, huh? I believe you've been informed by telephone. My brother has been murdered. Uh, yes. Uh, uh. Who killed him? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Rennick. You're sure? Mr. Rennick, I refuse. Ah, uh, 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 lady, easy on the whip. When I'm investigating a crime, I'm not a man. I'm a bloodhound. Now, if you just cooperate with me, this mystery will just fade, fade, fade. Fade away. Oh, what's in there? The living room? Nothing. Oh, nothing but the corpse, eh? What are you stalling me for? <sighs> that is Mr. Rood's daughter. The body is upstairs. Sheriff, if you think I'm going to wait around here all night watching you play G-Man, you're very much mistaken. Now, I want to look at that body and then get back to my life patient. Come on. Uh, Red, uh, sit down there and keep your eyes peeled. If you see anything that looks phony or anybody makes a false move, send for me. Halstead's the name. I guess you're the sheriff, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Keep your hands off that knife. There may be some fingerprints on it. We're still there, Sheriff. I just took a print off for you. If you're going to give this man the third degree, kindly step aside and allow me to examine the body. Do your stuff, coroner. Uh, what do you know about fingerprints? Oh, quite a lot. I spent a couple of years in Washington in the fingerprint bureau. Oh, a G-man? No, a private investigator. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm pussyfooter, huh? Hey, listen. This is my murder. And I want you to keep off it, you understand? Hey, Sheriff! Where's the Sheriff? What is all this? Will you jump the man off the dock? Sir, you might have a gun. Oh, I'm right, stand still, buddy. Stand still. Take it. Hey, Sheriff! Hold still. Sheriff! We nailed this guy when he comes sneaking up to the house with this. Fine, that's good work. Hold this. Get away from me, you fool. Oh, Dr. Kiddings! Oh, let go of them, boys. Go on. Go on out. This is very embarrassing to me, Doctor. 
This town's going to have a new sheriff, Rennick. Oh, how would I? Just to get in. Sorry to be so long getting here, but my car slipped off the road just outside the gates. And as I started across the lawn, those two half-wits jumped on me. Uh, doctor, I want to apologize. Don't bother me, Rennick. Uh, Marion in here? Yes, she's in here. Uh, Miss Leland, there are a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Who else uh, lives here? Well, usually just the servants. Rosita, the one you saw in the living room with Marion, and our husband, Esteban. Well, then we have two guests in the house, Mr. Walling and Mr. Madison. They were friends of my, uh, of Mr. Rood's. Uh, what's that room there? That was Mr. Rood's study. I want to get everybody in here. Uh, uh, uh Murphy, come here. I want you to go upstairs and get Mr., uh, Mr. 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 Walling, Mr. Madison. Uh, Mr., uh, Wallace, uh, Wallace, uh, Mr. Simpson and... Excuse me, sir. I'm afraid your deputy's eating the fingerprints. Red, put it down. Go out the kitchen and get Stebbins. Now we'll all go on in here. And uh, I'll sit right in there. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, lovely place you have here, Mrs. Leland. I'm glad it meets with your approval, Mr. Rennick. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> sit down, everybody. Sit down. Sit, uh, uh, who discovered the body? I did. Oh, you did? Well, that's fine. Just uh, lay your cards on the table, lady. I was preparing for bed when I heard a thud in the hall, like someone falling. And then I heard a scream. A blood curdling scream? Like thud. Like... Maybe it was a muffled scream, Chef. You lay off on the screen. Huh, all right, all right. Uh, go ahead. Well, then I put on my robe and went into the hall. And I saw him lying there. And I, I found Rex and sent him for help. Where was he? Who, Rex? Yes, Rex. Uh, I was in my room. Oh. Who knows you were in your room? Nobody, of course. But Mother found me there. Yes, that's quite... Sheriff, if I might make a suggestion. No, never mind your suggestions. No, 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 Come on, Miss Wants to. I understand. Senora Leland and Senor X have a big fight with Senor Root this morning. Why you no ask them, eh? See, uh, see, si, si, it's true. Many times I hear fighting in this house. That's a malicious falsehood. They're just... Just a moment, just a moment. You said something about them fighting, Rosie. What was Many times fighting about Rex. Money, money, girls, gambling. Mr. Root's very angry. Rosita! Quiet! I won't be quiet. These ungrateful servants are twisting an unimportant family discussion into something to shield themselves. Uh, 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 Stebbins! Now, uh, oh. How long have you been with Mr. Rude, Esteban? Fifteen years. Ever strike you before? Si, senor. Twice. Why did you stay? Because senorita Marion need us. Rosita and me. You're not getting any place, Halstead. So you think that uh, Miss Leland and Rex knocked Rudolph, is that right? Oh, no, senor. Well, then who do you think did it? La Muñeca Negra. Oh. Hey, uh, Red, uh, go out and get this ma La Muñeca Redna. Who? La, ma, uh, La Muñeca Negra? Uh, yeah, well, go bring him in. Uh, Sheriff, La Muñeca Negra is the black doll. Is this a rib? Yes, si, senor. Hey, Red. Uh, take them out, take wait, them out. Wait, wait a minute, Chef, wait a minute. There is a black doll. Miss Rude has one right now. Say, what kind of a gag is this? Did you ever hear of a criminal leaving a mark or a symbol to show who committed the crime? Well, whoever killed Rude left a black doll just for that reason. Oh, I get it. You mean just like in that picture, the, the, the mark of zero, huh? Exactly. Let's see it. Oh, Mick. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, for getting that. I was That's right. right. Sit down. How are you feeling now, Marion? I feel all right, I guess. Just a little frightened when I woke up, that's all. Come on, come on, come on. I come in here. Come on, I said I come in here. I want to find that black doll. Is anyone out of hearing here, Sheriff? You'll have to drop that third degree manner, Rennick. This young lady's had a bad shock. You'll give her a relapse. Let me talk to her. Marion, where is the doll? That's funny. It was here a minute ago. Yeah, I suppose it just uh, walked out, huh? I was out of the room for a minute, but otherwise there's been someone here all the time. Well, uh, may I ask uh, just where you went when you went out? I sent Rosita for some hot water, and when she didn't return, I went and got it myself. That's right. We had her in the other room. We had her in the other room? My mistake, Sheriff. You had her in the other room. Well, where's the doll now? Marion, where did you pick it up? It was thrown into the room just after Father was killed. Had you ever seen it before? Yes, but it was years ago. We were living in Mexico. One of the Indians gave it to me on my fifth birthday. I loved it very much. One day, Father and I were walking, and I dropped it into a ravine. Father went down to try to find it for me. On his way, he accidentally found one of the richest veins of ore in Mexico. He named the mine after my doll. He never found the doll. Of course, I was heartbroken. Just one more thing. Are you sure this was the same black doll? I've never seen another one like it. Well, it'll turn up again, I imagine. You imagine, huh? Well, suppose you just forget your imagination. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. This fellow Mallison. I've looked all over the house and I can't find him anywhere. Skipped, eh? And uh, this Mr. Walling. He's locked up in his room and won't come out. Now, come on, we'll wrap this case up right now. I'll, uh, I'll step. I'm gonna give you a break. We'll, uh, interview this case together. Fine. Come on. Rosita. Stay with him, will you? Speak to you. Won't you tell me what has happened? I haven't done anything. Well, then why did you lie to the sheriff? I didn't lie. But you said you were in your room. I was. Oh, you weren't. I went there right after and you weren't there. I'm sorry, Mother. You'll just have to trust me. Well, well, what? Well, what did you find out? Well, what do you suppose? The family was dead. Died of a knife wound. Why do your parties unknown? Been dead about an hour. Had the body removed. There's the instant of death. And those are the things out of his pocket. Good night. Good night. Oh, Mark. Yes, sir. Where is that fellow you said wouldn't come out of his room? Right over here, Sheriff. Oh. So he won't come out, huh? Oh, Sheriff. Come here, man. Would you like to see where that knife came from? Yeah. <laughs> well, what did I tell you? Mark, go get the fingerprint man. It don't take me long once I get my nose to the ground. Got it all doped out, eh? Come on, baby. The guy stepped out in the hall, stabbed Rude in the back, ducked back into this room, waited till everything was quiet, and took it on the breeze. All open and shut. It's a gift, Sheriff. Take a look around the room, see if you can find some fingerprints. Here's the knife. Put out an alarm, block all the roads, check all the hotels and tourist camps. Excuse me, Sheriff. I... I think you're making a mistake. I believe your man's still here in the house. What? There's his wallet with $400 in it. Nobody's going to make a getaway and leave that behind. And besides, he certainly wouldn't go out in his pajamas. Not on a night like this. Well, what's his pajamas got to do with it? 
The toilet articles belong to Ruth. Yes. The dressing gown also has an R on it. Why? Obviously, Mallison came unprepared to stay the night, and Rude supplied them. Now, Rude wouldn't leave out the most essential thing, pajamas, would he? Yet they're not here. Clothes ain't here either. Maybe they're in the closet. like you found Madison. Didn't you know he was in there? I had a hunch. Those marks on the floor must have been made by his heels when he was dragged into the closet. Oh, here's the lady in the case. Here, give me that. I'll take care of this from now on. You're a brave man, Sheriff. <laughs> Who's going to take your place when you're gone? The last two people who had that thing died rather sudden. Uh. <clears throat> Murphy! Murphy! Oh, yeah, take care of this evidence and uh, go down and get the coroner and bring him right back. Sheriff. Sure. Hey, Matt, Sheriff, sure. the prints on the handle of the knife and Mallison's wallet. Hmm. Well, he didn't do so bad in an old-fashioned sort of a way. Uh, getting the fingerprints so quickly, you mean? No, 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 finding the murderer. Oh, you found the murderer already. Well, sure. who was it? Why, Mallison, of course. He killed Rode. Prince are on the knife. Well, what do you want? Well, go on. After he killed Rude, what then? Oh, well, then he, um, well, after uh, he, uh, the, um, I guess, uh, He uh, went downstairs, maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he went downstairs, and he got, he got the, uh, he, he, uh, the... He stole the black doll from Marion, maybe? Yes, he went downstairs, and he stole the black doll from Marion. Yeah. That's right. Then, and then he came, then he, what, he uh, I guess he... He came right back up here. Uh, sure, he came right back up here. He came right back up here. Then he choked himself to then death. he choked himself to death. And uh, the black doll dragged him over and put him in the closet, huh? Hmm. Uh, what's in there? Well, that must be Walling's room. Well, that's what we come up to get, was it? Come on, come on, let's go get him. Is that all, Sheriff? Yeah. Open that door. Show some life in there, I'll shoot. Come on, come on, open that door. What's the idea of locking yourself in here? What are you hiding out for? I, I was nervous. Oh, you were nervous. Remorse, eh? You're scared, huh? Why did you kill him, Walling? I didn't kill him. It was rude. Oh. Yes. But he... He's going to kill us, too. I know. Never mind. Rude ain't going to kill second. nobody. Wait, wait a minute. I think he's got something to say. Everything's all right, Mr. Walling. Just tell us everything. It'll help us and it'll help you. Sit down. Have a cigarette? Yeah. What did you mean about Rude wanting to kill you? But Rude... Uh... Just a minute, Chef, please. Go on, Mr. Walling. He'd kill us in a minute. You don't know him. We were the only ones that knew that he killed Barrows, and he was afraid we'd tell. Who's Barrows? Well, he was one of the partners. There were four of us. Rude, Mallison, Barrows, and myself. Mrs. Barrows was along, too. Rude married her later, but he... he killed Barrows to get her. He pushed him over the ravine. Was this the ravine where Marion lost her doll? Yes. Mallison and I tried to get down to the ravine to find them, but... Then you're not sure Barrows is dead? No. How long ago did this happen, Mr. Waller? About uh, 15 years ago. We sold out to a syndicate later. I, I never saw Rude again until today. And you ain't gonna see him no more either. He's dead. Murdered. Rude? Murdered? I'm afraid that's right. And Mr. Mallison, too. Rude and, and Mallison both murdered? I knew it. I knew it. It's Barrows, all right. He's come back to life. And you think Barrows escaped and came back to even matters up? If that black dog could get out of that ravine, anything could happen. It's Barrows, all right, or his ghost. Oh, come now, Mr. Wallace. I tell you, it's him. Dead or alive, he's got the both of you. Get me. I I'm going to be killed. I take, take it easy. Take it easy. We'll see that nothing like that happens. Halston, do you mind if 
I ask him a few questions? Oh, of course not, Sheriff. I'm sorry. Well, now, the Sheriff. I want to say right now that I'm getting sick and tired of all this monkey business. If you have any more dead bodies, bring them out now. I'm sorry, but I didn't know he was going to be murdered after you left. Huh. He'd been dead two hours. That's impossible. I say it's a fact. I say it ain't. One more crack like that out of you, Rennick, and I'll bounce yeah. one off your chin. Yeah, yeah, but look, now, but there were fingerprints. His fingerprints were on the knife. Huh. I warned you, Rennick. I say that man had been dead at least an hour before Rude was killed. Halstead, <laughs> did you hear what he said? Yes. First thing you know, he'll be trying to tell me that Rube wasn't stabbed. He wasn't. Uh, you're going to tell me that a guy laying out there with a knife eight inches long on his back wasn't stabbed? That's right. The knife was thrown. Correct, young man. The angle of the wound indicates definitely that the knife was thrown. That's why Marion didn't see anyone. The person who threw it held it by the tip of the blade. And the passage of the blade through the body eliminated all fingerprints. Now listen. If you find any more bodies, keep them here until morning, if you don't mind. Good night. Good night. And he did it. Thought you good fool us, did you? No, no, I didn't. It was Barrows, I tell you. It was... Now listen here, I want to tell Don't you... Don't forget, Sheriff, whoever killed Mallison also stole the black doll from Marion. And he or she would have to pass through the hallway to get to the living room and would have been seen by your deputy at the foot of the stairs. Well, come on, let's go see. Come on, get out. Hey, Red! Red! Who's this? Why should I know? I ain't never seen him before. Can... can I go back to my room now? Yes, yes, yes. Go on back to your room. Hey! Mark, give me the black doll. I left it on the table upstairs. Well, go on upstairs and get it. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what do you say, Hofstede? Why, nothing right now, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, of course not. Well, it's all in the bag. There'll be no more murders. There'll be no more black dolls. Really? Congratulations. Don't you, don't you get it? No. But maybe I'm a little bit backward. All right. Who throws knives? There's the guilty party. What do you got to say for yourself? I say nada. Oh, don't, don't start the double talk again or I'll... Sheriff! Sheriff! The black doll! It's gone! Where is it? Oh, I'll find it. Red. Take this fellow and put him in the room and lock yourself in. Can I put him in the kitchen? Yes, yes, you can put him in the kitchen. Put him any place. But if you lose him, you'll be back selling popcorn again. Come on, Halstead. I left the doll over on the table, Sheriff. I didn't think... Uh... You'll never think. Well, you better start in. You'll be back selling popcorn. Did all your deputies used to sell popcorn, Sheriff? No, I just say that. Wally! Hey, Wally! Come on, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? What's that? I, I was going to put that up against the door. Oh, you were, huh? So we'd have to chop our way in every time we got here, huh? Where's the black doll? The black doll? Why, I tell you, I wouldn't even stay in the same room with it. Wally, you're lying. No, no, I'm not lying. I wouldn't touch it. I, I think he's telling the truth, Sheriff. Oh, you do, do you? Well, you keep your nose out of this case. This is my all case. All right, all right. I was just trying to help you with a little suggestion. Uh, 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 well, what the, what is it? What are you Oh, this is your case. You wouldn't want me to interfere. Oh. Hey, hey wait a minute. Halstead, Halstead! Look, Halstead, now, don't be mad at me. There, I'm just fooling and... Look, if you've got a clue, I... Uh, come on, let's tell it to me. Let's get together on this thing. Well, all right. I've come to the conclusion there's something in Walling's notion that Barrows was in back of all this. You mean that there's a ghost? No, 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 no. But maybe he didn't die. It's possible. And nobody has a better motive for the murders. Well, uh, you mean uh, trap doors and fake stairways and invisible paint? 
Where has he been hiding? That's it. The murderer had to hide someplace for two hours after he killed Mallison, waiting for a chance at Rude. Well, <clears throat> Have you looked in here, Sheriff? No. Ah, uh, there's too small a place for anybody to hide. Oh, yeah? Well, how about this thing up here? Listen, suppose the killer hides up there, or on the roof, and he slides down the outside on a rope, maybe. Why, why, he could have stolen the black doll while we were downstairs and gotten back up here in half a minute. Two to one, he's up there right now. You give me the word and I'll go and bring him down. No, 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 wait a minute. That's a screwy idea. I thought of that one myself. Come on, run along and... Don't you want me to go with you, Sheriff? I'm not going any place. I'm just looking for fingerprints, that's all. Now, look, I have some investigating to do. Now, you run along and sell your papers. All right, Fine. but I think you're making a mistake. I'm going... <clears throat> And if at last I can take you away where you can live like a human being. Excuse me, I didn't mean to intrude. Oh, hello, Mr. Halstead. Come on in. I wanted to see you. You appear to be the only one who knows what's going on around here. And as you're sure to find out sooner or later, I thought I'd like to explain that my interest in Mrs. Leland is something more than professional. As a matter of fact, we've been fond of one another for some time. Expected to be married until Nelson, Mr. Rude, objected so violently that we, well, we decided to wait. Well, I wouldn't admit a thing like that, Doctor. Gives you a fair motive for, for what happened. You're trying to be funny, Mr. Holmes. Well, he's quite right, Laura. I might as well admit there was no love lost between Nelson Rood and myself. To be perfectly frank, there have been one or two times I felt like killing him. But my job is to save lives, not take them. <laughs> How long had you known him, Doctor? Oh, for quite a number of years. He was subject to a peculiar malady contracted in Mexico. Actually quite rare and... Uh, well, I'm considered something of an authority on tropical fevers. That's the way our paths first crossed. Well, unless you want to become Exhibit A in this case, you'd better not let our friend the sheriff know how you feel. <laughs> Is um, Marion still in the living room? Yes, she's feeling much better. Go on in. She'll be glad to see you. Thanks. Who is it? May I come in? Oh. Rosita, hurry. Uh, just a minute, Nick. Rosita. Oh, never mind. Come in. Well, you look like a different girl. I feel much better, too, Nick. That is, physically. This other thing sort of got me down. No one can blame you for that. Mind if I smoke? No, of course not. It's all so horrible. Father and now Mr. Mallison. Who told you about that? Rex. I heard him talking to one of the deputies. Oh. Nick, what's, what's happening? I'm almost afraid to move. I feel that somebody else. Nick, tell me, who do you think killed him? I don't know yet, but I'm beginning to have an idea. Have who? Marion, how long ago did your mother die? About ten years ago, why? Oh, I just wondered. Your father must have been lonely. He never left the grounds, did he? Not very often. He probably didn't like the entertainment in the neighborhood. You could hardly expect him to be intrigued by places like, well, say, Eddie's Tavern, for instance. Eddie's Tavern? Oh, no. Rex might go there, but I'm sure father wouldn't.
Who's that? All right, get your hands off me. All right, stick them up. Get them up. Come on, get them high. Throw them up there. Oh, you haven't got any hands. Sorry, Sheriff. There's not much comfort in knowing our lives depend on him. I'm so glad you're here, Nick. I'm afraid I'm not much better off than the Sheriff. But I think I know what the next move is going to be. Marion, lock yourself in your room. And don't open the door for anyone but me, will you? All right, Nick. Oh, uh, Sheriff, I have an idea. Yes, just to the Mr. Halstead, you've been a big help to me. You helped me solve a lot of things on this case. But if you get one more idea... I don't like every bone in your body! Come on, Red Murph, get him, take him out, throw him out... No, not you, but get him. Sheriff, this is not the Tell you, Mr. Esteban, now maybe you'll pay some attention to me. It's too late, Doc. He's a goner. Sheriff. There's your little friend again. And, uh, what do you make of this? That's a cinch. First he tossed it in a black belt. That's his trademark, like he always does. And he threw the knife. And he missed. I see. Knowing that he was recognized, there was nothing left but the electric chair, why, he shot himself. And, uh, what did he do with the gun? The gun? Oh, he took, um, the gun, he, uh... Maybe he threw it out the window. That's right, he... After he committed suicide. Say, look, you're not going to start that all over again, are you? Nothing I can do for him. Just another case for the coroner, I'm afraid. Well, I'm going to lock everybody in this house up in one room. Stay with them myself till morning. That's a good idea. You've never tasted a house that's scrambled eggs. You've never really lived. You see, it's really kind of a gift, like being a sword swallower, having six toes on one foot. Incidentally, speaking of having six toes on one foot... Mr. Halstead, must you continue this inane monologue at a time like this? I'm sorry, Mrs. Leland. I was simply trying to ease the atmosphere. Don't you do something, Runnick? You and your deputies have been fluttering up this house for hours now, and you can't even keep track of the black doll. Well, you see, Doctor, there's a few things about this case that you don't understand. For instance, uh, where is the black doll now? It won't be there long, but it's under your coat. Oh, well, it was only a gag anyhow. You're getting warm, Sheriff. It was used as a gag. And a very clever one, to divert suspicion from the real murderer. You see, Nelson had buried himself here, but he kept in touch with the outside world, especially with his two old partners, Mallison and uh, Mr. Walling here. He was afraid of them because they were the only two living persons who knew the significance of the black doll. I'm afraid you're right, Stan Holster. 
You all know how the doll led them to the mine. Of course. I wonder how many of you know that... that Nelson Root murdered a man to get control of that mine. Nick. It's true, Mary. I don't believe it. I think you will, Mrs. Lynn. Do you want me to go on, Mary? Of course she doesn't. Whatever your father may have done, he's dead now. And I refuse to have him slandered by this unmanly man. I'm sure Mr. Halstead wouldn't have said what he did without a good reason for it. If he's willing to risk exposing someone who's already taken three lives tonight, we should be willing to forget our personal feelings and try to help him. Go ahead, Holson. The man who was murdered was Knox Barrows, a fourth partner. Someone learned Ruth's secret. How, I don't know. Possibly he eavesdropped. A man would hardly discuss a thing like that when anyone could overhear him, would he? He might. If he were in a delirium caused by a tropical fever. I guess I'd better be quiet. He'll be convicting me. However, he found out the murderer sent Rude a black dog. Not the one which brought the famous mine into existence, but one so much like it that its meaning couldn't be missed. The important thing was that it accomplished the murderer's purpose. He wanted Mallison and Walling here. So he used the doll to make Rude think that one of his old partners was preparing to blackmail him after all these years. Once they were here, the murderer could kill Rude in such a way that any investigation that more than scratched the surface would point directly to Mallison or Walling. Then uh, why did he kill Mallison? That's where he made his first mistake. He was so anxious to throw suspicion on him that he tried to steal an ornamental knife from Mallison's room. While Mallison was in the back, he was discovered. So it was either kill Mallison or give up the whole idea. Mr. Walling was the one he counted on to break and tell the story. So he pressed the handle of the knife in the dead man's hand to start the investigation in that direction. Where is the motive for all this? Oh, I'm coming to that. The murderer knew that there would be several people here with possible motives. You've got a good one yourself. Me? Oh, you're perfectly absurd. Not at all. Dr. Giddings was in love with you. He told me so. And Mr. Root had some hold over you that kept you away from the doctor. Now you're being ridiculous, Mr. Halsey. I don't think so. I'm simply pointing out that as far as motives are concerned, we needn't go beyond this room. In fact, you could have done it yourself. You will undoubtedly inherit a good share of your brother's estate. And if Marion had met the death intended for her, you'd be even better off. Say, that's right. She... Uh... You would have been free to marry the man you loved. And you could have done all the things for Rex that you've always wanted to do. Oh, come now, Halstead. That's a little far-fetched. Oh, I didn't say she did it. I simply said that she had sufficient reason. However, I don't think she's quite strong enough to have choked Mr. Mallison to death. So that lets you out, Mrs. Leland. Have some more potatoes, will you? No, thank you. I don't want any. Oh, come on. Have a few more. I may be a rotten detective, but I'm a very, very good potato fry. Hey, I know something you don't know. What? You're standing on my foot. Well, I'm sorry, Sheriff. And it certainly wasn't Marion. She'd hardly knock herself on the head. How did we know that you didn't do it? You don't. Give me a few minutes and maybe I'll talk myself into it. I might say, however, that the murderer is in this room right now. Who was it? Greg. Greg. He didn't. He couldn't. You mean to say... When I realized that your uncle had something on you that made your life a misery, that forged check, I felt I was getting somewhere. What forged check? You've got it in your pocket right now. I got it. That check was cashed at a roadhouse near here. You forged it, Rex, and your uncle threatened you with punishment. All right, I did do that. I did do that, but I didn't kill them. Did I hand it to you, Halstead? How'd you figure it out? Oh, he didn't do it, Chad. He oh. couldn't possibly have gotten into the hall, coming from the direction he did, and killed Esther back. So that lets you out. It was Barrows, I tell you, that killed him. It was Barrows. Take it easy, Mr. Walling. Take it easy. Remember. But he slipped up on one point. He didn't know one thing that you did. Marion, Nelson Rood wasn't your father. He married your mother when you were only five years old. You were the one thing Rood really loved. So she didn't tell you about it. Mr. Walling, you know who her father was? Why, yes. Knox Barrows. Then he... He wouldn't try to kill his own daughter, would he? Of course not. And knowing that, you wouldn't try to pin it on Barrows, would you? Why, no. Esteban knew this, too. 
He also suspected that the murderer would next strike at Marion. That's why he hid in your room, to protect you. I blame myself for not following up the first clue I had. What clue? Why, the cut telephone wires. The murderer had to cut the wires to give himself time to get away from the house and get back to his own home in time to receive a message to come back and aid the man he had just murdered. Looks like you're the only one who fits that bill, Doctor. Don't you think that's going to be rather difficult to prove? Possibly. But you're the only one who had a chance to plant that doll on Mallison. You left Marion alone. You could easily have gone up those back stairs while everyone else was in the study with the sheriff and me. Pretty thin stuff to get a conviction on. I'm afraid you're right. But do you remember when you first came into the house tonight? You immediately asked for Marion. How did you know she was hurt? You saw her come. Get out of my way! Mr. Halstead, I just want to thank you for all you've done. I'm sorry it turned out this way, Mrs. Leland, but... Well, well, why thank me? What about the sheriff? What do you think of the way I handled the case? Uh, uh, I say, what do you, how did you think? Why, uh... uh I think you're the dullest, clumsiest, most stupid, feeble excuse for a sheriff I've ever seen. <laughs> 